Hello and welcome to Photo Education Online. I'm Larry Lurcy and today we're going to talk about sharpening. And now one of the things about Photoshop is there's a million ways to do everything and sharpening is no exception. There's tons of ways to sharpen an image and there's not a right or a wrong way. It depends on the situation. Certain techniques will work better uh, for certain images. But what I'm going to show you is a technique that I use all the time that I think gives a lot of bang for the buck. It gives the most sharpening with the least amount of damage to other parts of the image. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to go with this image here, this umpire. And what I'm going to do is just kind of crop in on the area we're going to be working on. There we go. Let's just kind of bring this up to 100%. And this is where we're going to be working is just kind of in on this area, looking at the hat and the face. And just see what kind of stuff we can come up with. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare a few different techniques and figure out which one looks the best and then I'll take you through and, and do it a little bit slower. So first thing I'm going to do here is make a copy of this layer and I'm going to call this SS which stands for Smart Sharpen. So I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. And we'll go here till it looks good. We'll say about 140. Hit OK. Compare that to the original. Definitely much sharper. Okay, let's turn that off for now. Make another copy. And this one I'm going to call a UM for Unsharp Mask. A lot of you have probably used the Unsharp Mask technique. It's a great way to sharpen. I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Now, normally you'd probably be down here around 150 to 200. I'm going to go up here to about uh, 350. Since we're on YouTube, I want to make sure you can really see the difference. So we're going to exaggerate it a little bit. Hit OK. OK, so there's our Unsharp Mask versus the basic image. That looks good too. Turn it off. Now, for this third one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start with the Unsharp Mask. Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. I'll leave the settings exactly the same so we can compare them. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go up here to Edit, Fade, Unsharp Mask. Now the thing to keep in mind about the fade is you have to do it right after the action that you're wanting to fade. You can't do a couple more steps and then come back and fade this sharpening we just did. So right after doing that sharpening I'm going to bring up the Fade menu. And the first thing I'm going to do is drag this opacity all the way down to zero, basically turning off the effect. Then you're going to go to Mode and switch to Luminosity. Once you're in Luminosity, drag this back up. We'll go ahead and go to 100% just so we can see the effect a little more. Hit OK. And there we go. Let me just name this one Fade. So we've got three different ways that we've sharpened this image. Let's take a look at them. I'm going to zoom in one more time so we can see a little bit better what we're working with. Just kind of concentrating on the hat and face. So first of all, we're going to compare the Smart Sharpening to the Unsharp Mask. Here's Smart Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Smart, Unsharp Mask. And you can see that the Smart Sharpening actually kind of smooths out some of these areas. It almost starts getting like a painterly effect. There's the Smart unsharp mask. You see the unsharp starts giving you a little bit of noise in here but it also kind of gives you a little more grain and grit to it so it actually looks a little bit sharper and so I actually prefer this look to that. So I, I like the unsharp mask better so we'll go ahead and get rid of this smart sharpening. Oops, I didn't want to get rid of it. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the unsharp mask to the faded unsharp mask. Here's the regular faded, regular, faded. And at first it looks like you really can't see a difference at all. But take a look here in this red area and this red area. Here's the faded version. I'm going to go back to regular unsharp right there. See how that starts pixelating and the red over here almost starts glowing. See the before and after. It really affects that red. Here's the unsharp, faded. I mean, I'm sorry, that's the unsharp, faded. See how the faded is much softer versus the unsharp it's almost glowing, which I don't like that as much. I want to have the sharpening. You look here in the face as I turn them off and on. Can't really see any difference, but you sure can in those reds. 
and I, I, I like having the, the fade because it gives me the sharpening in here without blowing out some of my colors. And that's what I mean by getting the most bang for the buck without the side effects. It's not hurting as much of the other image that way. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to drop back to the original shot here. And we'll crop that again. So one more time from the beginning, let's work on this thing. First thing we're going to do, turn that off. First thing we're going to do is drag that down to here and make a copy. Filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Slide this to what we think looks good. Looks pretty good. Hit OK. We're going to go to Edit, Fade, Unsharp Mask. Bring that down to zero. Change the mode to luminosity. Bring this up wherever we want. Let's go about 90%, 89. Hit OK. And there you go. You got a sharpened version and a softer version. Now, this is definitely something that lends itself well to actions. So you don't have to go through all those steps every time. You can go through and make an action to do this sharpening and just do it all basically with one click. And if you don't know how to do actions, I did a tutorial on that a few weeks back, which you can look up, and uh, it will kind of walk you through that. But uh, it's a great technique, and I think you'll find it helpful. Let me know what you think about it. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. And I hope you'll check back for more tutorials. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.